truth tables for conditional and biconditional statements. So given P uh, so symbolic logic for the statement and you have a Q and the symbol for conditional is one directional R so that's P going to Q. So we're looking at four possible combinations because you have two statements here. Again, the formula was two raised to the power of n or the number of uh, inputs or the number of statements uh, that you're going to use. So since we have two p and q, that would be two power two. So that would be four. So starting from the second column, let's start with T and it alternates. Next would be F, T, F. On the first column, we have the uh, P. So this alternates also, but you have to start with two T's and then the next two would be F. If it continues, you will have two T's again and then two F's if we have two power of three or three input statements. Okay, so here's the two table for conditional. So, the P here is the antecedent and the Q is the consequent. A conditional is false only when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. And that would be the second row for the inputs. So again, uh, the conditional statement is false only, so that would be false, the output, when the antecedent is true, and the consequent is false. Okay, and the rest would be all T's. So it's like if you're going to memorize the truth table here, it's like T going to F, you'll get F, and the rest would be all T's. Then for the type conditional statement, so we're going to construct the table now, the truth table for biconditional statement. So the direction would be going to the left and going to the right for the arrowheads. So that should be P biconditional going to Q. And then since we have two symbolic letters P and Q so we have to have four possible combinations here so let's take the second row or the second column that would be the Q and start alternating starts with T T F T F for the first column that would be two T's and then two F's. Okay, so 
the biconditional here would have an outcome of true if all inputs are the same. So it means that the first row you have T for P and Q still T. So that would be a true statement. Same thing with the last row, you have F for P and uh, F for Q, that would be still true. Again, for by conditional, true only when the component statements have the same truth value. So that's TT, you'll get T, FF, you'll get T. And the rest would be false. Okay. Now, in addition to this conditional and biconditional truth tables, just recall what we did also in the previous section. We did the not, and we did the and, and our truth tables. So we should memorize uh, all those truth tables so we can solve some problems. So let's have an example here. So you're given with uh, two input statements, which is P and Q. And we have the OR and the AND and the NOT symbol here. And we have also the biconditional symbol. Okay. So here we're asked to construct a truth table for the given statement. So we have to work on our truth table here and try to count the number of uh, letters or symbolic letters. So we have only P and Q here, one, two. So having the formula two power of N, you have two power of two equals four. So we can create a truth table that has four possible combinations. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, P and then Q and then we have four possible combinations. Let's just extend because this one is a longer truth table. Uh, this is the second one here and the third one. Okay, and the fourth one. So remember that we start with the second row and it's alternating. You start with T and then F, then T, F. On the first row, it's alternating, but that should be two T's first and two F's. Okay, so we have to look at the expression. So we can start looking at the not Q 
and then not be here. That would be easy for us to write the truth table uh, values. So we can have that. That's, uh, not P. And then not Q. Okay, so. And then that would be easy because we were just taking the opposite. So look at the first row for the possible combination. So you have that P, you're looking at this column which is the first column. So if you're looking at, let's just put a different color, uh, the first column, P, and you have a T value there as the first value that should be um, the opposite now, which is F. And do the same thing on the second. And then on the third, you have F, take the opposite of that, it gives you T. And the same thing on the last uh, row. For the NAT Q, we're looking at this part. NAT Q. The second column. And we're just taking the opposite of that. So T, we'll get F here. And F, that would be T. T, the opposite is F. Then F would be T. Okay, so those are the values. So you're just actually taking the opposite on the first column and the second column and then let's work on P the first expression from the left which is P uh, conditional to Q. Okay. So since that's a, a conditional uh, statement, remember the uh, truth table for conditional uh, statement that if you have a transition from T to F, that's the time you will get a full statement. Otherwise, you will get true statement. So let's try to find that out. So we're looking at uh, P and Q. So it's over here. Uh, P and Q. And then we have to have the transition TF. So T going F, that should be uh, T going F, that should be this one, uh, the second uh, row. So that's going to be false here. And let's find out if there is another one. So we have only one, T going F, and then the rest would be all Ts. Okay, and again, this refers to the first expression here. And then we have to work on the next one. So let's work on P and not P. So you're looking at P and not P. Okay, 
So in this column, you're looking at uh, P, which is here. Uh, let me use a different color. And then you're looking at not P, so that would be this uh, third column. So the first column and the third column, and it's N. If you remember the add uh, truth table, you can only have true as an output if all inputs would be true or given the inputs are all true. So looking at B, that's the first column and the third column is not P you should have TT. So looking those combination, we don't have that. So the only answers we got for this column would be all F. Again, for N, you should have all inputs true. To get a true um, statement. So all false because you have uh, looking at this you have TF the first row and TF on the second the third would be FT and then the last one would be FT. So that's why we're getting all false. Okay, so next we're looking at combining. So let's have this one combining this expression. So using the or. So you're looking at or with the two expressions. So you're looking at um, P conditional to Q. And then that would be or to P and not P. Okay. So what we're looking at, we're looking at uh, this operation here. So let's. Uh, Mark that out, use a different color. So this is the one here, which is OR. So what we're looking for now in this column, it's the fifth column here. And the sixth column. OK, so do not look at other columns. So that's OR, and if you remember OR, um, you can only get full statement when all uh, inputs would be false. Again, if you get false, your input should be all false. Otherwise, true. So in that situation, we have this all false FF. So we will get false here. And the rest would be true. OK. And let's work on the last part. The last part is 
uh, by conditional. So since this is long expression, I'll just actually point this out and using only the symbol. So I'm looking at the whole expression. So the whole thing, this goes here. Okay, and this is exactly the operation. So for the whole expression, so we are on the last column and that would be our final answer. So now, since we are the last column, we're looking at only um, let me see. We're missing one column. Okay, so let's uh, have one more column here. Okay, before we go for the final answer. So let me mark that out. Uh, the column that we're missing is actually this part, the right side of the biconditional. So this part here goes here. So which is the symbol would be conditional. Okay, so let's take that one first. So that's looking at not uh, Q, not Q is here, and not P, not P is here. Okay, so we're just looking at this two columns here, the third and the fourth. Okay, so if we remember, we're using uh, this symbol to represent conditional. And conditional, if you memorize the truth table, that would be transition from T to F. So T to F, that's not Q. You're looking at uh, this uh, row because that's T going to F. That's the transition. Again, T going to F, that's the time you will get F. So F here. And then the rest would be T. There's no TF, right? Okay. So we're good. The rest would be T. Okay. And then we're going to the last column now. The last column actually comprise with all the expressions that is given to us for this example, and which is the final actually column, and that would be our final answer. Okay, so what we're looking for here, we're looking at uh, this column and we're looking at this column okay so i marked that red and that's by conditional and remember the truth table for by conditional statement um, if you have by conditional uh, all inputs the same, then the output would be true. Otherwise, you will get false. So we have uh, TT here. So that would be the, that's the first uh, combination. So we will get T as our answer here. 
and we have FF that would be T also. And TT that would be T. TT that would be T. Okay. And we have this final answer. So all T's uh, for the final answer. So this is our answer. And we call this answer as tautology because they are all true, all true. Okay, so that's the answer for this example. And the foundation for uh, doing this truth table is knowing all the truth tables from not uh, conjunction. Uh, not is negation. Conjunction would be and. And then this junction would be or. And we have the conditional and biconditional in this presentation also. Okay, so that's it uh, for this truth table.